Well, greetings, everybody. I'm excited to have you here and have you listening to the uh, this series of messages on uh, this new class that we uh, are developing as part of our forerunner school uh, called the Theology of the Bride. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm in the process of writing it now, and I have several sessions written, and will continue to, to write. I don't know exactly how many sessions it'll be, actually. I'm just going to just keep writing as long as the Lord says uh, to teach and, and write about a particular topic. But I'm really excited about it. Um, it's called A Theology of the Bride, and, you know, uh, the theology is like the uh, theo being of God and theology being the study of it or the word of the word of God. Uh, and a study about that as it relates to the bride of Christ. Um, I thought what I would do as I begin is I want to kind of make sure we take a step back uh, from you know the details as we get started and go into really an overview of, of, of why we're doing this class and why we're doing actually even this Forerunner School. Um, back in December of 2000. Uh, 19, 2019, the Lord spoke to me really, really clearly uh, that he wanted me and, and my wife Donna to be kind of like the characters he used were like Zacharias and, and Elizabeth, where they birthed John the Baptist. And he wanted us to be uh, a people, a couple, who would birth forerunners, who would birth John the Baptist, birth forerunners. You know, John the Baptist has said, of him in Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 16 and 17, that it's he who'll go before the Lord, uh, that, you know, as it says in several places related to John the Baptist, he says, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not the Christ, but I'm one called to go before him to make a people ready for his coming, for his coming on the scene. Of course, John the Baptist ministered uh, at Jesus' first coming before his first, well, not, yeah, before his first coming on the scene in terms of ministry, uh, he ministered to make a people ready to receive him uh, and to be ready for his ministry, his earthly ministry. And uh, we, we talked a lot about this in our Understanding the Forerunner Call class. That same anointing is there uh, in as preparation for the second coming of Christ, to make ready a people prepared for the second coming of Christ. That forerunner anointing uh, drawing from that same anointing that was on Elijah and it was on uh, John uh, the Baptist. Uh, and so the Lord has called us to, uh, to, make, to raise up a, a company of forerunners around the earth. And uh, we're excited about that and we're, we've been working on that. And as we prayed about how to do that, the Lord said to start a school called, the, and we did this, and we've done this, called the Forerunner School. And, you know, a number of you who, who are watching this are part of that school. Uh, and we've talked about a lot, we've had a lot of classes uh, in that uh, up to this point. Uh, and so this class is about equipping forerunners uh, about the, uh, around the topic or in the topic of the bride of Christ. It's very, very important. Uh, you know, if you look at John chapter 3, verse 29, and let me actually just turn there and read that. Uh, verse 27, verse John 3, verse 27. And John answered, uh, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given from heaven. This is John the Baptist, even though it's in the gospel of John. You yourselves bear witness that I, uh, that I said, I am not the Christ, I'm not the Messiah, but I have been sent before him. He who, and here's what he says in verse 29. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. And so this joy of mine has been made full. And now what is he saying there? He's saying that he's not the Messiah, but he's a friend of the bridegroom, and he who has the bride is the bridegroom. So what is he saying? He said one of his major assignments as a forerunner in the spirit and the power of Elijah is to prepare a people 
as a bride for Christ, to prepare a people as a bride for Christ. And that's a major aspect of the Forerunner School. And I'm trying to emphasize this because this class that we're starting to teach on is called a theology of the bride. Uh, and Forerunners, one of the major assignments of Forerunners, anointed by the Spirit and the power of Elijah, is to prepare a bride for Christ, to prepare a worthy bride for Jesus Christ. And if you and we'll introduce this in this session, as you begin to look at the scriptures from Genesis, uh, from the beginning, Genesis chapter one through Revelation, the end of the end of Revelation, the theme of the bride made ready uh, permeates the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament. And so it is a major aspect of of what Christ wants uh, in this age is to have a prepared bride for him. And as forerunners, it is a major assignment of forerunners. So here's the point. Uh, and this is part of our forerunner school. Forerunners must have an understanding of the bride of Christ. Forerunners must understand the theology behind the bride of Christ. Is everybody the bride? Uh, what does it mean to be made ready? Uh, as a bride? Uh, how do we prepare ourselves as a bride? How will God use the bride in the end times? What is involved in the whole issue of the bride? Uh, what is involved in that? And forerunners must understand that. If they're going to be a voice uh, calling people to make themselves ready as the bride of Christ, what we must understand the, the theology of the bride, all the various tentacles and various aspects of the bridal paradigm, we must have an understanding of those things. And so that's what this class is all about. It's about our trying to get an understanding, a deep, deep understanding uh, of the bride of Christ. Uh, it was interesting. I was really surprised uh, you know, moving forward a little bit from God saying start the school. We, we've started that and uh, you know I wrote the, the first class of understanding the forerunner call. Then I wrote a second class on becoming an eternal purpose house of prayer which is a part of a big part of the, the forerunner call. And then uh, I was asking the Lord what was the next class that he wanted me to personally to work on to write. Uh, and our plan prior to this was to use the class, uh, A Worthy Bride or Understanding the Bride of Christ, which we've been using in Africa for a number of years. I wrote that class in 2009, and so it's 2021 when I'm speaking here now. In 2009, I wrote that class. It's been translated into five different languages, and we've used it to equip, uh, you, you know, over well over 1,000, well over 2,000, uh, probably closer to five, three or four or five thousand pastors over the time period in Africa. Uh, and so I, we were planning on using that in the Forerunner School as the, as the uh, teaching on the bride. But then when I asked the Lord what to, to, what to write on, to do work on next, uh, I heard clearly write on the theology of the bride, theology of the bride. And what I sense as I prayed about it is that the Lord wants me to... Uh, bring a deeper understanding, a deeper revelation. He wants to do that through this class of what all is involved in the bride. And so we've chosen uh, to do that and we're working on that and writing that now. So we're going to, a lot of it will be somewhat of it, or a lot of it will be somewhat overlapping the topics that we talked about in the Understanding the Bride uh, class um, but they will go deeper, you know, I mean, there will be some new uh, issues as well because we've learned more since 2009 uh, and uh, the Lord will, will uh, use us to do that, I believe. So anyway, that's a little bit of a background. I started just to get a little bit of history on the bride. Um, I began to get revelation about the bride in 1996 when... Uh, Noel Mann started coming to our church. He began to talk about the bride, and uh, Mike Bickle was talking about the bride at that point in time as well, and others. And I began to, began to get a little bit of revelation about it, 
And I had a hunger and a desire to study it. So I, I really, it's kind of been one of my areas that I've really wanted to dig into. And uh, so I began to do that in 1996. And then we went, began going to India in the late 90s and Fiji to a degree, even maybe around that same time as well. Uh, but right, especially in India, I began to teach about it and then we began to teach on it in Africa in 2003 and four, and we finally wrote the class about it in 2009 and used it there. So the Lord has been using, has been teaching me a lot uh, about that, about the bride since the, the mid 90s. And my, my desire is to put a class together that will deal with just virtually every facet of the bride and the bride made ready. And that's what this class uh, is intended uh, to be. So anyway, that's a little bit of introduction of what, why this class and, and how this fits into the overall Forerunner call uh, and the Forerunner school. Now, what I want to do in this session is to, I want to talk about uh, eight reasons uh, why it is important for forerunners to understand the bride. I want to kind of go through the scriptures and deal with eight different reasons why it's important. One thing I do want to say, uh, one more thing before we get into those eight reasons, is it's really important for forerunners to understand this, this one point, really important, is that just because we're teaching about the bride, as a forerunner we can maybe be a voice into the church for the bride to make herself ready. Well, as important as that is, as important as that is to, for us to do, we must not think that because I am teaching on that, that I am automatically made myself ready to be, a, to be the bride. And the scripture verse that, that comes to mind, and I pray it fairly regularly, uh, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Uh, this is what Paul wrote. He said, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way is not beating the air, but I discipline my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, what I want you to hear, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Now, he's not talking about losing his salvation here. He's talking about not being disqualified from the high call of God. And we want to apply that to the bridal paradigm. Just because we teach others about the bride doesn't mean that we have automatically made ourselves ready. Just because I go to a church who just teaches about it doesn't mean that I am automatically made myself ready. We must do the things that the scripture says. We must pursue those same uh, anointings and those same impartations and transformations that are in the scripture that we'll teach about ourselves. So it's a warning, a caution to forerunners. We are to be friends of the bridegroom and to teach and to prepare the bride for Christ. But we must also not only be a voice, we must also be those who are making ourselves ready ourselves. So that's the challenge to us all. So anyway, I want to have a prayer and then I want to go through these eight uh, reasons why it's important uh, that we uh, teach and become those who would make ready a bride while the, the bride is important to Christ. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this class. Thank you for the group who, is, who are listening and will listen to this uh, online or in person or in whatever format, part of the Forerunner School or in other ways. And I ask that you would anoint me and that you would speak your truth with your boldness and your love to your people. Anoint this teaching, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, now we're going to talk about eight reasons 
why it's important for forerunners to understand, uh, to, get a, to have an understanding of the, the bride. First and foremost, uh, a, prepared bride, a prepared bride is a central tenet of God's eternal purpose. The prepared bride is a major aspect of God's uh, eternal purpose. Uh, when the eternal, in the class, the eternal blueprint, we list five purposes of God, five aspects of God's eternal purpose. And number three of those five is that in God's eternal plan, it was determined that Christ would have a bride a, a, as an eternal partner, a, an equally yoked bride prepared for him. So let me just read. This is a quote from our uh, class, Understanding the Forerunner Call, uh, but it quotes about God's eternal purpose. So a little bit of reading, but I think it would be worth it to read it. The third aspect of God's eternal purpose is that Christ would have an equally yoked bride. In the council of the Godhead in eternity past, it was determined that the son would have an eternal bride to be at his side as his wife forever. The son would love the bride just like the father loves him, and in return the bride would reciprocate love back to him. She would love the son just like the father loves the son. The plan includes the bride making herself ready for the wonderful love relationship by allowing the indwelling spirit to live his life through her. Through this process, the father will provide Jesus with a pure, spotless, holy, and worthy bride who loves him just like the father. As the ages unfold, the prepared bride will be eternally at the side of her bridegroom king, and together they will expand the kingdom of God throughout the vastness of creation. Thus God's eternal purpose includes giving the Son, the eternal Son, an equally yoked bride. Now that's a powerful uh, statement and it communicates a powerful truth about God's eternal purpose. Now this next quote is from our class, Understanding the Bride of, of Christ by William um, uh, Bilheim who wrote this uh, in a book that he wrote. It, it, being the bride of Christ, is one thing and one alone, the eternal companion of Jesus Christ, holy God and holy man, the final and ultimate outcome and goal of events from eternity to eternity, the finished product of all the ages is the spotless bride of Christ, united with him in wedded bliss at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and seated with her heavenly bridegroom upon the throne of the universe, ruling and reigning with him over an ever-increasing and expanded kingdom. He entered the stream of human history for one purpose, to claim his beloved. Creation has no other aim, history has no other goal. From before the foundation of the world until the dawn of eternal ages, God has been working toward one grand event. One supreme end, the glorious wedding of his son, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, again, powerful, powerful words about Christ's desire to have a prepared bride for him. And so, if for no other reason, uh, the, but there are others, if for no other reason it's important that Christ have a prepared bride and that forerunners are given the assignment to prepare this worthy bride for him. So that's the first uh, reason. Uh, the second reason uh, you know, why it's important for, Christ, for us to be a voice to prepare a bride and for Christ to have a bride is that the bride being made ready is a major theme of Christ's teaching, especially in this last week of his earthly ministry. Now, if you were... When Jesus entered the, triumphantly, riding on that donkey, he rode that donkey into Jerusalem on what we now call Palm Sunday. He rode that donkey in there, triumphantly entering to, to the praises of the people. Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Now, he knew what laid ahead for him. He knew that a week later he would be going to the cross, he would be dying, and he would be paying the price of sin on behalf of mankind and being resurrected and going back to heaven. So he knew that he only had a short time left. And so he was teaching his people. He went, when he entered, he went to the temple, he cleansed the temple, he confronted the religious leaders, but he spent time with his disciples and he was teaching them. Now, he was teaching them the things that were really, really important uh, to the Lord and to him. You know yourself, if you're going on a long journey, if you're going on a trip, you want to really teach your, teach your family and say to your family and to the people that are closest to you those things that are the most important things. And so what did he talk about? Two, he talked about several things, but two very important parables he spoke of in that last week. Matthew 22 and Matthew 25. Matthew 22 says, The kingdom of heaven can be, can be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. Very important. Very important theme because he talked about it in that last week. And then in verse chapter 25, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to ten virgins who were going out to meet the bridegroom. So he was talking about this marriage theme, the marriage for his son, the, the, of the virgins going out to meet the bridegroom who would be coming. And so it's very important in these last hours that he had with his people that he focused on those important things. And one of the major, ta one of the major topics was the bride and the bride being made ready. Again, showing us how important it is and it was for, for Christ to have that bride. The third reason why it's important, I'm going through, you know, these are, we're just touching on things that we'll probably go back and deal, you know, with a whole session on, especially Matthew 22 and Matthew 25 and some of the other topics there. Uh, but we want to give, I want to give an overview in this session of, of what uh, some of the issues are and the importance to just kind of put in our hearts how important it is for, for us to focus on uh, preparing a bride for Christ and understanding the bride. Third, the third one is that the Bible begins and ends uh, with a wedding. It begins and ends. The, Bible, the entire Bible begins and ends with a wedding. You know, we, we know that it begins with Adam and Eve and God creating Adam and then taking uh, a rib from Adam's side and creating Eve. Uh, and so, but that's not just the creation of mankind, the beginning of mankind, uh, even though it was that, it's also foreshadowing that bridal relationship between Christ and his bride, the very beginning of scripture. Uh, because, you know, in Romans chapter 5, verse 14, uh, that Paul says that Adam is a type of Christ, uh, a foreshadowing of Christ. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, Verse uh, 20, starting with 27 and through about 33 or so, we see that it's talking about Christ presenting to himself the church without spot or without wrinkle, blameless and spotless in every way at his second coming that he would present to himself a glorious church. Well, that church that he's talking about is a bride. If you, look at the, if you look at that scripture passage in Ephesians chapter 5, what do you see? You see that there's this um, intertwining between marriage, between a man and a woman, between Christ and his church, and it's all about the bride. And it ends up saying that the mystery is great, but that he's talking in the context of marriage about Christ and his church. Uh, and so they quote in that, in that passage, uh, Genesis chapter 2, which is talking about Adam and Eve and the bride. And so we can see that there's a, that, that very beginning of Scripture, very beginning of Scripture, there's this picture with Adam and Eve of Christ and his bride. And there's a lot more we could say about that, but we won't talk about it 
any more in this session. We'll maybe talk about it later on uh, in this. So the Bible begins with a wedding, and it's a picture of Christ and his bride. But it also ends with uh, a picture of the wedding of Christ to his bride. Revelation 19, uh, verse 7 through 9, and I'll read that. We'll use this a lot in this class. Very important scripture you need to get familiar with. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, starting with verse 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the, of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are true words of God. So this is in Revelation chapter 19. Now, there are 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. So right at the end there, but that's not all. Then in Revelation 21, 2, it, John wrote this, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. Made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And then even 22 verse 17, it's the spirit and the bride say come. So what do we see? We see the Bible beginning with a foreshadowing of Christ and his bride through Adam and Eve, and we see the Bible ending with the bride made ready and the bride crying out, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. Now that in itself speaks of how important this whole understanding this bridal paradigm uh, is. So anyway, that is the point number three. Now there's a fourth one uh, as well. Uh, we're going through eight altogether, but there's a fourth one. The prepared bride will be presented to Christ at his coming. Now, we talked a few minutes ago about Ephesians chapter 5. Um, that, but Ephesians 5, 27 says that he, Christ, might present to himself the church in all her glory without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. And I already said just a minute ago that in talking about Adam and Eve, that this church, this the picture of the church presented to Christ will be his bride. In other words, at the second coming, the Lord will present to himself a bride without spot or wrinkle, blameless, holy and blameless. The mystery is great, but that's what he's doing. He will present that to him. Now, you, we had the end time class, and you understand with the end time uh, class, we talked about uh, the seven mountain mandate and some of the other uh, uh, eschatological views the seven mountain mandate says that the church that we will the church will present the culture, transformed culture, the seven mountains of culture to Christ at His coming. Uh, that would be the church and the uh, government and the education and media and entertainment and all of those things. That's not going to happen. That'll happen in the millennial kingdom age, the age to come. But in this age, the Lord will present to himself the bride made ready. And so it's important that forerunners be given, they are given this assignment and they take it seriously to, to make ready a bride uh, for Christ. Um, the fifth reason why it's important for the bride, uh, for the forerunners to focus on preparing a bride for Christ and us as forerunners understanding the bride is that when the bride is made ready, the Lord will return. When the bride is made ready, the Lord will return. You remember we read Revelation 19, 7 through 9 just a minute ago that the bride has made herself ready. Uh, and if you'll notice in, um, in the book of Revelation that 
Revelation 19, 7 through 9 says the bride has made herself ready. Verse 10 speaks of John, about John. But then in verse 11, the heavens open up. The heavens open up and Christ returns. So here's the point. You know, we, we think that it's getting darker and darker and darker, and it is. But no matter how dark it gets, no matter how evil things get in the earth, no matter how much the devil seems to be ruling the earth, the Lord is not going to return until the bride has made herself ready. That will be the trigger. That will be the event uh, that, that ultimately signals the second coming of Christ, the bride being made ready in sufficient numbers. Now, we don't know what that number is. We don't know how many individual believers for him to have that corporate bride made ready. But when the bride is made ready, then Christ will return. Uh, and so, therefore, again, it's a, it's a mandate to forerunners to make ready a bride. And we, have, if we, go, we must understand the bridal paradigm in order uh, to do that. The sixth reason is that the prepared bride will dwell eternally in great intimacy with Christ and will be his eternal partner in the ever-expanding kingdom. Uh, it's the bride who will, who will dwell in intimacy uh, with Christ. You know, Revelation 21.2 talks about the new Jerusalem descending uh, from heaven to earth. Now, it says in there, this is hard to, uh, it's beyond our ability to understand, but the, the, the new Jerusalem is also the bride. Uh, you can read it right there in, Reve in Revelation chapter 21. And so the bride, and Jesus will dwell in the new Jerusalem. And so it's this, this picture of intimacy between Christ and his bride, an eternal dwelling place uh, with, with the bride who has, been made herself, been, who has made herself ready, dwelling in intimacy uh, with, with Christ in the new Jerusalem. That's the intimacy. But that... New Jerusalem will also be somewhat of a mission base where the bride in intimacy and in partnership with Christ will take control first of the earth, but then as a base for the ages, eternal ages, never to end, where Christ's government will always be increasing, Isaiah 9, 7, will always be increasing, and at his side will be that worthy bride. So it's almost like this age, this life, is, a, is an internship for the bride to be prepared, to be used forever and ever and ever and ever in intimacy and in partnership with Christ. Therefore, again, extremely important that we understand the bridal theology and that as forerunners we, we take that theology and be a voice into the church and into the world. The seventh reason why it's important is that the theme of Christ and his bride is a thread which runs throughout the scripture from beginning to end. The, the theme of Christ and his bride is a thread which runs throughout the scripture from beginning to end. Now, we've already talked about the beginning and the end. We talked about Adam and Eve foreshadowing the, uh, Christ and his bride. We talked about Revelation chapter 19 and 21 and 22, uh, talking about the, the Christ and his bride. So we see it at the beginning and then we see it at the end. We've also talked about uh, the, the scripture verses that are, that are in uh, Matthew chapter uh, 22 and 25 that right at that end of Christ's time on the earth speaking about the bride. So, there, But there are other places as well really throughout the whole scripture. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, what you see is that different books deal with this whole bridal uh, understanding. The book of Esther and we, sessions three and four will deal with Esther. 
Uh, I love the book of Esther. It's one of my favorite books in the entire Bible. It's amazing. The book of Esther doesn't mention God, uh, doesn't mention Jerusalem, doesn't mention uh, anything related to the Lord, but yet it's one of the most profound books in the Bible uh, related to the bride of Christ in a uh, type and shadow form. And we'll deal with that in two, we'll take two sessions to deal with that in session three and session four of this class. Uh, but that book deals with the bride. And then you got the book of Song of Songs, uh, which deals with it. It's a, it's a great allegory that deals with a bride who wakes up to fall in love with her bridegroom king and the journey that she has to go through to mature in love to she's made ready as that bride in intimacy with her bridegroom king. That's the Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. Also the book of Ruth, the book of Ruth. She starts out in Moab and she ends up married to her bridegroom, the kins, her kinsman redeemer. Uh, and it talks about her journey uh, as well of devotion, of growing and maturing devotion to her bridegroom king. Again, another beautiful picture in type and shadow uh, form. Genesis chapter 24. And, and I'm, one reason I'm saying these is you need to get familiar, forerunners, you really need to get familiar with, the, with each one of those. You need to spend some time studying Esther, studying Ruth, studying Song of Songs to get this inside insight into these books because they are very important. They have hidden nuggets. Each one of them has hidden nuggets that is, a, that is a critical for people to understand if they're going to make themselves ready uh, as a bride. And so uh, I'm mentioning these on purpose. And then another one is Genesis chapter 24. Genesis 24. This is where Abraham sent his servant to find a bride for Isaac, the son. Uh, and she's in, he has to go to Babylon to get her. And he says, you have to come out. You can, I cannot send my son there. You have to come out of that. And it talks, it's a picture of how the bride must come out of Babylon uh, in order to be made ready as a bride for the Son of God. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, chapter that makes such a powerful thing. And then the book of Hosea talking about the never-ending love, the faithfulness of God for his bride to take her, <coughs> even in her uh, immorality and adultery, whether it's spiritual or whatever, and bring, her into, and bring her into the wilderness, but to ultimately to, to make it where she calls him her bridegroom. So the book of Hosea. So, and, you know, we, we talked about Matthew 22 and Matthew 25. We talked about John the Baptist uh, saying that he was a friend of the bridegroom. But there, uh, there are a couple other places as well. Even in the book of Revelation, those messages to the seven churches of Revelation, talking about overcoming. And a lot of the, a lot of the overcoming promises to those seven churches are bridal in nature, like being a pillar in the temple of God, being a pillar in the new Jerusalem, sitting on the throne with Christ and others. And we'll look at some of those in, in later sessions. But those promises to the overcomer, a lot of them are bridal in nature of the bride who has overcome and made herself ready. And then one more, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 2, Paul sp spoke of the church being betrothed to Christ, being betrothed to Christ. And again, another reference to uh, the bride and the bridal, uh, the bridal theme. And in fact, in the next session, we're going to look at the, uh, the, uh, the issue of the Jewish wedding and all the different principles there and how betrothal is one of those aspects of that. We'll deal with that in the next uh, session. So what do we see? We see that from beginning of the Bible to the end and all the way through, uh, book after book after book, New Testament truth after New Testament truth, and especially we will see it in the next session when we talk about the Jewish wedding system. All through the whole scripture, Jesus came, uh, as, uh, he came to betroth the bride. Uh, that's a, a, an overriding, overarching theme of Jesus coming uh, to earth. And so from beginning to end, the scriptures speak of the bride of Christ. 
The eighth reason, and this is the last of the reasons, uh, is that the scriptures teach that those who are wise will make themselves ready without delay. Will make themselves ready without delay. The parable of the ten virgins. Uh, there were five who were wise and five who were foolish. It's the parable of the ten Christians. Five wise Christians and five foolish. The five foolish ones didn't pay any attention to making themselves ready. They did not get oil for their lamps. They were not alert. When the bridegroom came, the, the, wedding, the door to the wedding uh, chamber was closed and they missed it. They, did, they were not wise. Those who are wise will make themselves ready while there is time. They will make themselves ready. And forerunners, friends of the bridegroom, are essential uh, in that task. Um, so I think, we've, I think we understand that the whole topic of the bride is an important theme of Scripture from beginning to end and everything in between. It was focused on by Christ. It was focused on by many of the Old Testament uh, prophets, different books, allegories. And for friends of the bridegroom, we must understand. We have to dig into it. We have to know this. It's not enough to be able to say to someone, you need to make yourself ready as a bride and not know anything else why or what is involved in it. What if they say yes and they say, what do I do? Well, you have to be able to communicate from Scripture the various ingredients and components of making themselves ready. So it's very important that if you really want to be called as a forerunner, if you really are called, this is a forerunner school, this is a class in the forerunner school. Now, non-forerunners can learn a lot from it. I'm not saying it has to be only forerunners. But if you are called, if you are called as a messenger, if that is your voice, you are a messenger or a master builder, where you're, where you're called to work with a pastor or, or some other leader, and you're called, and your your call is to help them build a wine skin, a new wine skin, that can that can transform the lives of people, and so that many many other people can make themselves ready as a bride. You have to understand what is involved in the bride making herself ready. You have to understand. That, that there's intimacy required, that there needs to be transformation into the image of Christ, that there's a saying yes in our spirit that is necessary. You have to understand the need to come out of Babylon. And more than just the, being able to communicate that one sentence, you have to be able to really get a depth of understanding about the bride making herself ready and falling in love with Jesus in a, in a deeper, deeper way. You have to have insight. These are mysteries that must be unfolded. And, you, and God is unfolding them in our generation, but we have to really dig deep into the scriptures to really get these things. And so I challenge you as we begin this class as forerunners, this is a part of a for, the forerunner school that we have started, that you, that you take the time to dig into these issues. You'll not be able to do it over the... 12 weeks or whatever the number of sessions it is in this class ends up being. You'll not be able to do it in that. You'll, it'll take you uh, really years. Um, I, I've been focused on this since 96, uh, and so that's over 20 years, 25 years or so, and there's still, the Lord is still giving me deeper revelation of a variety of topics and issues. And so I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you not just to go through the motions of even just digging into these sessions, but to take like the Song of Solomon and spend uh, several months digging into that, taking the book of Esther and getting insight into that, uh, taking Genesis 24, taking the book of Ruth, uh, taking the parable of the, of the ten virgins, taking the parable of the marriage supper of the, of the lamb, all of those things, and take time with each one and, and meditate on them and study them so that you can really get an understanding of these things, so that you can be an effective voice. You can be an effective builder. 
you can be effect, an effective friend of the bridegroom. So as we bring this to a close, one of the major calls of forerunners is to be a friend of the bridegroom, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, to make ready a bride. And I challenge you as we pray, take it seriously. God needs forerunners who are committed to this task. So we ask that you say yes, not only to being made ready, but say yes as a forerunner, to be a voice, to be a builder, to be a friend of the bridegroom. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.